Hey, what's going on, NBA Draft fans? Welcome to Film Sesh. My name is Corey Tullib of the NBA Draft Dude, and we have a very special guest in the house today. We got my guy, Colin Castleton. Colin, what's going on, man? Nothing much, man. I'm out here in Boston now, just uh, enjoying the process, but yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, last time I saw you, we were in uh, Tom's River, New Jersey. I was watching you work out, and um, it seems like a lot's you know been going on since then. So what has your last couple of weeks been like? Yeah, just um, very busy. Uh, a lot of airports, a lot of hotels, um, just traveling to each city um, for workouts and stuff. But um, like I said, yeah, just enjoying the process, getting a lot of good feedback, um, you know, just a lot of traveling. So making sure you stay hydrated, making sure I'm eating the right stuff is just and everything. But yeah, I would just say super busy is the biggest word for me. Yeah, man. Uh, exciting times. Uh, you getting jet lagged at all going city to city? You got any like cross <laughs> cross country flights going on? Yeah, a little bit recently, um, some workouts have been like um, scheduled, you know, a little bit last minute in a way because certain teams are coming to picture uh, later. But um, just, you know, just flying to different cities, going East Coast, West Coast. I, I got to go to L.A. and I was just in Denver. So like just going back and forth um, from the East Coast to West Coast. But for the most part, I've been doing fine. I had my whole West Coast trip. And then, um, you know, these last couple workouts have been, you know, just back and forth. But you get used to it. So it's not it's not a problem. Hundred um, percent. Before we get started breaking down your film, for anybody who isn't familiar with your game, how would you describe uh, your game? Um, yeah, just a, a versatile big man, somebody who could do uh, you know multiple things on the offensive end, but also on the defensive end. Something I really pride myself in is being able to protect the rim, um, helping out whenever somebody you know miss, messes up on defense. I can be there to protect them at the rim, um, and just a vocal guy who um, you know communicates to everybody on the court, uh, brings a lot of energy, a lot of passion, and. Um, you know, just excited to to continue my career and get to the next level. Yeah, I I mean the the defensive impact that you have is I mean three blocks per game this year. Um, you know, one of the best shot blockers defenders in the nation, and I, I think that's where we got to start with with your film. And I think that this possession here um, does a really good job, kind of showing the the full gamut of of what your half court defense is like. Um, stop the drive on the help. They got to kick it back out. Now you they got you in the post. Right. You stop that, um, make him move off the ball and ultimately end up blocking the shot. I mean, you're everywhere on a possession like this. So, you know, take me through something like this. What are you like looking at to be everywhere at one time? Yeah, the biggest thing for me is just, um, you know, helping out my teammates, knowing uh, they'll know where I'm at in the court, being able to talk to them, communicate right here. It's obviously one on one. So I just got to guard, you know, my yard one on one, not let him get a good opportunity at the rim um, and just like here helping out as well. Um, just letting my teammates know I got their back um, and just being like a pilot as a big man, you got to be able to communicate as much as possible. You know, your guards don't know where you're at. So being able to be vocal and let them know where you're at is the biggest thing. And then, like I said, right here, it's just one on one. So it's nothing more than just, you know, taking pride in defense and not getting scored on. So, yeah, I mean, I know we talked about, you know, we mentioned that you average three blocks per game, but I think this possession shows like how important it is to, you know, uh, the things that don't show up on the stat sheet are like you prevent multiple shots on this possession just because of your size, your defensive ability um, before ultimately, you know, getting the counting stat. But all that stuff is important just just because, you know, you're, you're deterring, you're intimidating and you're making it so that people really have to think um, on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, definitely. Just making sure I use my length. Um you know, I know certain guys, Tennessee's, I'm obviously scouting certain players throughout the year, watching a lot of film, something I love doing, you know, obviously we're watching film now, but being able to know my tendencies, I knew, you know, Olivier, he was good at mid-range shots. So being able to keep my hand in his face was the biggest thing for me, understanding, you know, what he liked to get at, knowing I'm a taller guy. So he might've tried to get into my body a little bit more. Um, and just knowing certain guys' tendencies was something that I really took, you know, focus on. I loved taking pride in. Yeah, and uh, you definitely show it there. But, you know, I think the uh, the interesting thing that maybe people who, you know, look at you and think like seven footer, seven, three and a half wingspan, they may not realize like your versatility on that end. Because you're not just a guy who's like standing in the paint and, you know, you could actually like get out on the perimeter and switch out. And um, mm -hmm. right here, we got Gigi Jackson. You're on an island with him and like you're good, like no help, right? And ultimately recover and, send his stuff so uh have you always been comfortable like guarding out on the perimeter like that yeah um you know it's something that I've always just taken pride in knowing you know obviously I'm a big man and 
Um, you know, whether that be a guard throughout my years in college or in high school, I've had friends that are basketball players. Obviously, you know, they love when a guard switches on to them. That's something that a lot of guys like doing, and they take advantage of that because they know that, you know, they may have more of an advantage. But um, over the years, I just take more and more pride in it. It's something that I know is, you know, a big man's, I guess you could say, weakness now in this day's, day and age. Um, you know, guys are continuing to be able to be versatile, not just on offense, but on defense. Like I said, I love taking pride in that. So, um, really just just focusing in on it and knowing, like I said, the tendencies of the players I'm guarding. If I got a quicker guard, um, maybe take a step back and use my length. If I got a guy who's a really good shooter, you know, step up a little bit more and I can just cut him off at the rim. Um, so just knowing tendencies. But, yeah, I've always been, you know, above average at moving my feet for most big guys that I watch film on. Um, and it's something, like I said, I just take, you know, really big pride in. Yeah. And, I, I mean, Gigi is like a big dude himself. But, you know, here you are on a guard. And like you're good even on on little like quick shifty guys too like yeah. you know yeah. you you stop them in semi transition here I mean yeah. you're down in your stands you're moving your feet like you got all of the agility where does the agility come from um yeah just working on it over the years um I feel like it's something that a lot of coaches helped me with throughout my college career um like you said just not you know the biggest thing for me was being able to transition into okay yeah you're a good shot blocker. Like that's cool. You can do that in college, but at the next level, they want to see how how low you can get, um, how quick you can be in your stance, how agile you can be at at six eleven and have some weight on my body. So being able just to showcase that this year was something big for me. Um, tried switching and being able to communicate in transition because a lot of times in transition, you know, most big men are used to just running back to the rim and just picking up their guy. So I feel like it's good for me just to be positionless on defense, so I can pick up any guy um, in transition and just help out. Yeah, you did a really good job in transition, um, picking up like ball handlers right here. Perfect example of of you doing that, like, you know, a little like secondary break. I think Kobe Brown mm -hmm. thinks that he's got a step on you. Um, mm -hmm. I, do you think people underrate how, like your length? I mean, I, I was kind of surprised when uh, you measured out at like seven, three and a half with your wingspan. Yeah, I mean, I actually was surprised, too. I didn't know what my <laughs> wingspan was. Like everybody always asked me before the draft and it's obviously gotten, you know, um, over the years, it's grown, but uh, like I thought, I remember last time I did measurements on my wingspan, I was like seven two something, almost seven three. So then seeing that it was you know longer than that was shocking. But um, yeah, I think some guys may not think I'm as long or you know agile. That's the biggest thing. So like they know yeah. they, maybe they'll get their first step on me, and I just recover with my length and a little bit of my quickness. So it's it's a little bit of a blessing in a way too. Yeah, because he kind of like gets a little step on you here, but even so. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. you time it, extension to a, a great job there in, in transition. And then, I mean, something that you have that you can't teach, that you can't work on, like, you're just a big dude. You yep. know, like, I saw you in person, you're a big dude. And I think, yep. you know, that's like, you don't get a block here, but that's just a hard shot for somebody to make over, like, not only are you tall, but like, you're you're sturdy, you're strong. Um, so I, I think like, uh, looking at a guy like Walker Kessler, like, He's just a big dude, and and sometimes yeah. you know it's it's hard to shoot over the top um, of people. So, what's your approach when guys do try to kind of take you in the post and and mm -hmm. body you up a little bit? Yeah, um, really, the biggest thing for me is just maintaining my ground, making the, the the catch hard enough for them to where you know it's not easy. Obviously, this was off of a wall screen, so and then a pin down, so it was a little bit easier for him to get a catch there. But once he catches it, just making sure I could take a first, you know, a couple bumps, and then he took a fadeaway. So that's the best shot. That you can alter as a as a shot blocker. Um, that's a win for me. Is anytime a guy should fade away. Um, at the next level, guys are you know obviously more skilled. They make a lot more tough shots, so they'll make fadeaways. But as a shot blocker, you know guys will make shots, and that comes. But um, just making it is difficult. Even if that's a guard, if I'm in a drop coverage, if I switch, whatever the case may be, I may not block four or five shots every single game. But I know that I'm going to try to um, you know make it as hard as I can on you know the opposing team and even the big men that go at me. Yeah, just make them work and and yep. alter their shot if anything. One hundred percent. Now, in this game against Kentucky, um, we got we're in the half court. You're guarding Oscar. You know, big, strong dude. You know, garbage man type player. Game plan wise, are you just kind of ignoring him in the half court here? Like you're dropped back, and mm -hmm. uh, ultimately that kind of lets you like you tag him when he goes in the paint. But when he comes to set a screen, like are you just waiting for the drive so you can come over and help? Yeah, that was kind of our game plan this year. Um, you know, I respected his mid-range a little bit more this year. I understood. I've watched a lot of film on him, and he's grown in that area. But um, with certain players, like myself, too, guys have to live with certain things. And uh, with him, that was something I was fine with this year was, 
me giving him a little bit more cushion, I knew that I'm quick enough, like we talked about, and agile enough to where if he caught it anywhere from 15 to 18 feet, I could close out quick enough. But the biggest thing, obviously, they have a lottery pick, Casey Wallace. They got some good players that come off ball screens and they're super athletic. So um, just coveraging and, you know, making sure I help my teammates out, um, help my guards out. And then I, I knew I could get back to him quick enough um, to where I could guard him one-on-one. Yeah, you do a good job and, you know, Case in, uh attacks the rim and um you know he he's kind of underrated with his finishing and uses that little lefty scoop and you send it into the stands uh let's transition now like to the other side of the ball um and i, I think that you know your offense uh this year you were uh, kind of like a hub a, a focal point initiator and mm-hmm. um you know it, you ran like a lot of stuff that you're going to run kind of in the nba as an initiator out of like the elbow spot or, or up at the top of the three point line. And, you know, I, I kind of love this play because, you know, you're going to be running this a lot and you're, you're a lob threat. You could just go up and get it um, and playing off these handoffs. So uh, talk to me about like the, the freedom that you got as an initiator this year. Yeah, that was a big thing um, with coach golden this year. Um, just focusing on being able to play, make a little bit more. I feel like that's why my assist numbers were able to go up uh, almost a whole point this year going into my fifth year. Um, it was a focal point for me, um, and I'm continuing to work on it, being able to pass the ball well, uh, and not just scoring, but this year being able to just catch the ball and make plays for others. Uh, set really good screens was a big focus of mine because um, I know as a big, you know, you set great screens, you're going to get open on a roll or a short roll or pop, whatever the case may be. So um, just making sure I focus on the little stuff because I knew um, also obviously being in the SEC for two years, I knew when I was going to be able to get buckets and I knew, you know, I was going to be able to get my points and my shots up, but um, being able to help my teammates out, get good screens, um, and just play through myself, not only scoring, but, uh, facilitating as well was, you know, a focal point this year. Yeah. And, uh, I think that like the IQ that you show in the half court, um, not only as a passer, but you know, your timing, knowing when to roll, um, and the fact that you are, you know, a big lob target on, on this play, South Carolina, um, young team or, you know, Gigi Jackson, young guy, were you opening up this possession and kind of put him in a position where he was going to have to think, uh, and, and kind of make a decision here? Yeah. Um, we, we love this play right here. It's just a uh, basic, you know, it's a good delay play where I fake a, a pin down into another pin down. Um, and then I usually it's with one of our shooters. So that was this time it was Will Richard. Uh, he would pass it to our point guard, cut to the corner. And with a shooter, they have to chase or else he'll just fade it to the corner and get a three off. So this was a great play to run because I was always open at the rim. Um, and if even if they switch to have a smaller guy on me, just quick little duck in for, for a little post up or a, a dunk. And then um, if they chase the screen like they did here with Gigi, um, you know, Will knew it was either a floater for himself or a quick lob up to the rim, which they both stayed with him. And, you know, I was open at the rim. So, yeah, that's easy money. Yeah. Um. And I, I think, you know, outside of just, you know, the the kind of set plays, like, I think you did a great job on this possession, like, as a cutter. Like, uh, this seems more like you can kind of read, react to how the defense is yeah. playing you, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I knew Auburn was trying to <laughs> not make catches, like, really high out. It was something they have doing, like, all games um, that we played them throughout the whole uh, game as well. A lot of teams would try to deny my catches. That's, you know, the, the game yeah. plan is get the car- catch out as far as away from the basket you could because – you know, if a team wasn't doubling me and it was within 15 feet, I was able to get to my spots with kind of ease, I would say. So um, just being able to catch the ball as far as possible was their goal for me. So throughout the year, uh, I would just start to learn timing and understanding I can just backdoor into a lob like this or even come down with it and make a good finish. So that's what I did here as well. Yeah, that was a, a really crafty way to open up the um, the half and kind of make them have to think about, like, All right, I can't overplay you getting the ball up top there to the, the initiate sets because you can uh, you can just go back door and, and make them pay. Um, but you know, outside of you just being a like lob target, uh, I, I think on, on this possession you do a good job of showing off kind of the big man post uh, post work here. Yeah. So uh, talk to me about like you know your footwork here and and how you're you're playing a guy like this. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it was basically just like a little spin move, to be honest with you. Just threw it up with one one leg. I work on my touch shots every day. So those are like easy money for me. Uh, you know, I got to be able to make those with my eyes closed. So I work on that every single day. Just, you know, little baby hooks. That's something a big man always has to have in the back of his pocket. Mm-hmm. Um, especially when teams double me. If I get it that low, I already know somebody's coming. So that's why I use my shot fake there. I already knew I had an angle on Oscar. 
Um, in this game, I was getting a lot of stuff that I wanted. So I knew that they were going to have to throw a double team at some point. So, uh, yeah, just shot. A, I was going to shoot a fadeaway, and then I saw him coming. So I shot faked and just spun back around, reverse pivoted. So being have, having good footwork is something that I work on all the time, little touch shots around the rim. Um, and just, you know, off two foot, off off one foot, just being able to work on my touch because um, every big has to have that. Yeah, and, and I think one of the things that I noticed that you do a lot, especially when you get the ball in, like, the post is, um, like, you bring the ball up high here so the little guards can't come through and, like, strip it away. And I think, you know, f- positive assist to turnover ratio. And that's a, a – for a big man who – has the ball as much as you do and has as many responsibilities initiating. I think that's, you know, uh, really important. And then, um, I I love this here. This is simple, you know, just clean, high, unblockable shot. Um, so you say you work on all of these touch shots, but, um, you know, like, uh, you keep it nice and simple. You you don't really try to do too much. You give what the defense is, mm-hmm. is playing you. So what are you reading here? Do you know you could just get to like a simple, easy move? Yeah, I knew, um, like I said, most teams were either double or really hard dig. So once I caught it, this was a set play where it was just, it was going to be a handback, but, you know, they knew I was going to get guarded one-on-one. So they just threw the ball right back to me, ran a little split cut with Myron there. And uh, like I said, I knew they were digging hard. So I just take the first dribble to fill him out a little bit, see how much ground he's giving me. And then once I knew I could get a little bit more space in there, I took a, another hard dribble, just the first one, second one, and just brought it over because I knew he was digging. And then uh, anywhere within like 12 to eight, eight to 12 feet, my little jump hook is money for me. So um, being able just to get into those spots uh, and something through pre-draft I've been working on is a little turnaround jumper too, not just forcing the hook. Um, even if I have it in my left hand on the other block, being able to get into like a little fadeaway mid-range or that's something that you have to have at the next level in a short roll situation when, you know, you set screen. So uh, developing that, but yeah, some teams would just hard dig, and if the double didn't come, I just went to a nice little, you know, pat and jump hook there. So yeah, and uh, you could feel him. You know, he's you know kind of playing straight up, and that's easy. I love this next one um, because y- you make such a quick decision here, and it kind of shows like your processing speed uh, down on the block, like quick spin for the finish. So. Are you? Do you feel him like on your hip or on your back, so you know you can you could spin off of him like that? Yeah, I felt him playing a little high sided, and uh, you know most guys they'll try to be more physical if they don't have a height advantage on me or are the same height, and you can feel them leaning into your back. So every time I feel a guy leaning on me a little bit extra heavy or I'm trying to put a little bit too much strength, it's an easy quick spin to the baseline. Um, but it depends on the team. I knew they weren't doubling, so. Most teams will have a guy in a low position where he'd be under the basket there, and I'd have to take a little bit of a hesitation dribble maybe. But um, I knew that if I was going to go quick enough or, like, you know, off quick spins, it's hard for that guy down there to react. See, he was a little bit late and tried to just reach and steal. So, um, you know, if you go quick enough as a big and you're posting up like that, uh, even facing up within 15 feet, if you go quick enough, you, the help will, will not be able to get there quick enough, like fast enough to block it or try to affect the shot. So, Yeah, 100%. Um, and you have that uh... – that little uh, face up work in, in your bag as well. Um, you know, which I think opens up because you can knock down, um, you know, that, that little 15 footer, uh, let's mm-hmm. bring up the, the, the little attack. Um, <clears throat> so you get, you like this spot where, uh, you get the ball. Um, ultimately let's say ball goes to the, the corner. All right. You get the ball here, right on that elbow face up, yeah. right. Rip through. An attack. Um, how much does like that that little fifteen footer that and I've seen you know you working on that um, in Tom's River. How much does that help with with stuff like this? Yeah, throughout the year I was just continuing to be comfortable in it. Um, and you know, guys got to play your shot just as much as your drive. So, like you said, see this guy, he's trying to push me out um, as far as possible. Because um, most teams scouting report, like I said, if I caught it within eight to twelve feet, they knew it was going to be an easy shot for me. So, being able to push it out as far as they could from from the basket was, you know, obviously every team's mindset and goal. So I was just trying to find little pockets right here like this, make sure I was isolated and just go to work, just a little rip through here. Um, uh, if not, I was just going to counter to the middle and try to get to the rim as well. So uh, if they're pressing up on me, obviously I'm going to just try to use my first step. But if guys are going to be delayed and backed off, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot the shot every time with confidence, um, like I've been working on, like you said. Yeah, and, you know, I think the the fact you're you're big – and uh, like you could handle it a, a little bit. So even, um, you know, when you get the, the ball up here, like where you initiate from, if, if you see an opening, you can kind of go and attack it. And um, that you're 
confident move against a guy who was a, a big time shot blocker this year. Yeah, definitely. Um, just being able to attack and get to my right or left shoulder, right hand jump hook was money for me. Every time I went left, I was able to spin and, and go back to it. But um, that's something I'm continuing to work on too, going into pre-draft and next level is being able to just be able to counter both ways. So once I get to that spot, they'll cut me off and know I'm going to go with my right hand hook. So being able to shoot that fadeaway, like I said, is something that I'm continuing on and working on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now I want to talk about your playmaking because uh, I, I think that, you know, in today's NBA, like you can't just be one dimensional on either side of the ball. Like you got to be able to bring other aspects to the game. And, you know, we see bigs more and more now being used as playmakers as, as hubs. Um, and I, I love this pass because this is like kind of like a wing pass like you know you get the ball you're making a move spin you make a read to the cutter and uh, that, that's a beautiful quick read so uh, have you always been kind of like a, a a good passer yeah I would say um I've always had a knack for passing and it's something I've loved doing being able to find my teammates when they're open is something I love doing because you know I know when I'm wide open and a teammate finds me it's a, it's a great feeling and being able to let them know like hey great pass is something I love doing so being able to pass the ball is something that I've always taken pride in I feel like I've gotten better over the years in college you know being able to read double teams and you know most guys it's easier to pass the ball when you're just getting guarded one-on-one -on -one. but as a big man in college um, I'd say it's a little bit more difficult because guys are you know focusing on you uh, making sure to try and take you out of spots and as a big man you can't do every single thing so you got to catch the ball in certain areas so being able to read double teams is something that I've developed and gotten better at. Um, and just finding cutters is, is the biggest thing. You know, they're trying to front me here. They're not even letting me, you know, get in my spots. So being able to find those pockets and then just telling my teammates, like every time I caught the ball, I'll let my teammates know in a timeout, like cut off me, make sure you find an open pocket because the way they're guarding me, um, it's not a knock to anybody else, but they were trying to take me out of the game. So being able to find them is easy. It gets my assist ups um, and just being able to focus on, you know, my other teammates scoring. So. Who were like the uh, the passers or like playmakers that you watched growing up? Yeah, um, watched multiple guys when I was younger. Um, when I was little, I always loved watching Tim Duncan. He was somebody that just was, you know, maybe not the most athletic, maybe not the most um, agile or quickest guy, but he always found a, a, a great spot to be on the court. He always was good with angles, knowing where his teammates were, um, and just guys loved playing with him when you watched those those years with the Spurs. They were really smart and. Um, you know, he was kind of just a tactician. He was able to find his teammates open, and he knew when teams weren't double teaming or he was going to go one on one. You know, he was always finding a way to get a bucket. And then, you know, now I love watching Jokic with the way he passed the ball. Um, he's obviously one of the best players in the NBA nowadays. So, um, just learning from guys like him and the way the game's evolving with big men, uh, it's like a perfect time for me to make this jump to the NBA because you got so many good big men that play so well. But yeah, the best passer right now obviously would be Jokic, um, and somebody that I love watching the way he plays. Um, the game is just never sped up for him. And that's something that I try to emulate, not letting any guy speed me up or take too many dribbles or force a pass. Um, just reading what they give you and kind of just playing off that. Yeah. I, I think this is kind of a Jokic esque pass. Like, obviously, it's nothing like super mm -hmm. fancy, like, um, but you're, you got the ball at the top of the key. You're, you're kind of uh, initiating the set. And um, I think what I love about this pass is you're like leading your man to the spot. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you're not, if you pass that behind him, it makes him a tough, a tough pass. And he might have to, you know, reach behind for a split second and the defender could recover. So, um, like, when did you start feeling comfortable as, as a passer, as a playmaker, and as a guy that felt like, all right, if I'm the, the, the hub of the team, like, I feel like that gives us the best, you know, chance to win. Yeah. I'd say, um, Going into like my fourth year was the best year that I started realizing, OK, I can pass the ball a lot better. But especially this year, my fifth year, everything was obviously ran through me a little bit more. Um, guys would, like I said, try to take me out the game. So I had to really find opportunities just to to get my teammates buckets. And even if I'm not scoring or in a scoring position, I knew how to read the defense. And for instance, here, Auburn, you know, they blow everything up. They switch. They switch a lot of stuff, but they also chase really, really hard. And like right there, Wendell Green was just running through. So I knew I was just telling my guards anytime they were just chasing you and, and trying to run you down just just back door come off me cut off me and being able to just to get to the rim with an easy bucket is it's the best shot as a layup so um they were just reading off me and reacting yeah it's a great great read and then here i like this one with the left hand yeah yeah, yeah you guys... it was like it was a i think uh we would run this play every once in a while just so if we try to catch the defense sleeping um little backdoor cut from the corner 
Um, and then just obviously it's spaced out five out, so there's nobody to help, um, which is the easiest play. It's just a backdoor cut when your center is at the top of the key. Um, that's what we did there. You comfortable using both hands? Yeah, definitely. I feel like I can pass the ball very well with both hands, finish with both hands. So um, it's something I'm continuing to work on. Like I said, I work on it every day, ball handling with both hands, touch shots, just your basic stuff um, that every player needs to be good and skilled at. Have you always been comfortable with your left hand, or is that something you feel like you got better at in college? Yeah, I've always been able to – I feel like I've always been super versatile um, throughout my career, being able to handle the ball with both hands. Um, but the passing thing has definitely grown. It's something that I've really focused on, like I said, over the past couple of years. Um, and like I said, I know at the next level, a lot of stuff is short roll. A lot of stuff is being able to make that quick read. So if it's with your left hand, it's, it's that split second to get your teammate open. So um, something that I'm really focused on as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then, you know, uh, I think, you know, you're kind of you're the type of guy who's this year. You, you got the ball in the post a lot. And like you said, they sent multiple defenders at you. Um, I like this because you're patient and you're able to see over the top. And that weak side hit is yeah. is so important. Right. And um, yeah. So when when you do feel like multiple guys coming at you, I mean you're tall. How much does your height help you? You know, as a playmaker. Um yeah, definitely. Um obviously helps, but um you know when there's guys that are in my height, like Tolo Smith here, he's about six eleven, six ten. You know, there's obviously you know Matthews was double teaming as well. He's about um I'd say like six seven, six eight. So it's two pretty big guys as well. It's kind of just feel for the game, knowing that you know once I look baseline, they might have taken their. They move their hands down. And I know just a subtle movement, like showing the ball, um, as I did, a little retreat dribble, showing the ball here, and then they come down and pass it. So just find those little quick windows that I can get my teammates open to, as, as best as possible. Because I already knew with this game plan, um, like I said, Riley cutting down near the basket, Will was going to be open on the weak side. So um, just showing the ball, maybe shot faking it or pass faking it, uh, relaxes them a little bit for a second, and then I can just you know swing that pass over right away all my teammates are telling me to do it as well so everybody sees it i want to transition to uh your shooting because you know i spent a couple of days with you i watched you could shoot the ball yeah. um you i think you hit two threes this year you didn't attempt a lot um shooting hasn't been a big part of your game uh mm -hmm. throughout your college career but your form is definitely workable it's it's smooth like I said, I watch you knock down shot after shot in, in the workouts during the uh, pre-draft process. So um, I like this is this is a shot to open the game and, you know, pretty confidently giving you space, knock it down. Uh, where are you at right now with your shooting and, and your confidence in your shot? Yeah, um, like we said, uh, not as many opportunities in college. I didn't take as many shots. Um, but, yeah, throughout the pre-draft process, I've just been really, really focusing on it. Um, every day, getting X amount of shots up. Uh, we were getting hundreds of shots up during pre-draft and just really fully believing in it, being confident in it, because I know it's something that they want to see at the next level. And even if it's not right away in my career, it's something that I'm going to be able to have in my back pocket as I get older. Um, and, you know, whatever team needs me to do, I'm obviously going to do that. It's not something that I need to go outside of my realm. But, you know, I know what I'm capable of. I know I'm confident in now I'm getting, you know, my groove back with shooting. Um, and I'm definitely capable to be able to extend my range. So um, once that time comes, I'm continuing to show teams in my workouts that I'm capable to shoot the ball. I feel like I've been shooting it pretty well in workouts. Um, and I think teams are definitely seeing that when they evaluate me. So I'm um, just continuing to work on it. That's the biggest thing. I know I got room to grow in that area as well, but you know, everybody has room to grow in different areas and that's something that I'm continuing to work on and I'm going to continue to get better at. I, I think I, I just like watching you shoot with confidence, make or miss. I think that um, even when you miss, I think as, as long as you're, you're kind of shooting with confidence and, letting it fly it causes the defense yeah. to make a decision and react so i you missed the shot here uh but i love it because not only um do you let it fly with confidence but i i think your footwork here is is really smooth you got like a nice smooth one two step um because i think sometimes when you hesitate you shoot a little flat-footed mm -hmm. um but here nice confident and you you let it fly when you are shooting it well like what are the things mechanically that you're doing that you you feel good about yeah, that's basically what you said, um, you know, not overthinking it, not taking that extra step in between. And that's something I've heard throughout my whole process is, um, you know, if you're going to shoot it, you got to shoot the ball. You can't second guess it. You can't overthink, OK, am I going to shoot it because he closed out short? You know, don't worry about what the defense is doing. If he's giving you a little bit of space, you know, be confident in it, you know, take a good shot. Don't force anything, obviously. But um, if the teammates, if the other team's going to give you an open shot just like that, just being able to just take it with confidence. It was in and out, but it looked good um, and just 
you know, the more reps you'll get up, the more volume, you know, obviously you're going to make more shots. So just like I said, trusting it, you know, not the next time not shooting it is something that I wasn't doing. You know, maybe I'll miss a shot and I wouldn't take the next couple of them. So just being able to continue to grow in that aspect, um, make or miss the right footwork um, and just continue to work on it. Yeah, I, I think that's the right attitude to have. That's the right mentality. And I think you're going to be able to shoot it. Um, I, you know, I, I think it, it might be a, a couple of years before, you know, you're getting it up at volume. But I think, again, yeah the way that you operate as a, a ball handler in these sets um, at the top of the the arc like this as a passer and stuff, like being able to knock that shot and make guys pay if, you know, teams do start kind of playing off you or going under on screens or whatever. Like, I think that that's going to uh, do a lot for your game and the, the pick and pop, the short roll stuff, um, especially like, I, I know you're comfortable shooting from 15, but using that as an opportunity to, you know, be a threat, cause guys to rotate and then make plays off of it. I think it's going to be, uh, you know, really important for your, for your game. But, um, I, I'm, I'm excited to see how, how that aspect of, uh, your game develops. Cause I, I definitely think it's there. Um, now, but before I, I get you out of here, um, just tell, what do you think you could bring to an NBA team like early on in your career as a rookie? Yeah, hundred percent. I feel like, um, you know, there's this notion like about older guys that, it, you know, you can't draft as high or you may not have as much upside, but I feel like, Right now with the NBA and certain teams wanting to win right away, I feel like I can bring any team, somebody who can help right away, can come in and be an energy big, somebody who can block shots, like we said, protect the rim, um, and just continue to grow, be able to play make, not with that, not with just scoring, but being able to facilitate, finding my teammates open, um, and whoever the players are on the court, being able to set good screens, um, getting other guys open, and just somebody who plays with, with really high intensity is going to come in from day one, work their, work their butt off, and just be able to get um, an opportunity at some point is just my goal, being able to just get on a team and just be the best teammate possible, be a good locker room guy. So just, you know, a lot of things I feel like I can bring to an NBA team. And um, throughout my years of college, I've learned a lot of great things. And I feel like I'm ready just to, to help any NBA team that I get on. A hundred percent. And I love the the point you made about like how there's a perception about older guys not having as much upside. You know, Mikael Bridges went on J- the JJ Redick podcast uh, earlier this year. And um, he was kind of talking about that because he was, you know, a little bit older when he was in the draft and he was still a lottery pick. But if you look back in that draft, there are a few guys who play his position that like clearly he was better than and has a better career than. And he was like, all right, so I'm 22 years old. Like, what am I going to stop getting better? Like, you know, even if you're 22, 23, like you're still so young in in your career. So um, and especially I think guys who improve their game year after year like i understand if you're in college and your skill set uh skill set kind of stagnates right like maybe there's something mm-hmm. to it but you know when you add things to your game every year uh i think that shows like a, a an upward trajectory on on your development so and you definitely added new wrinkles to your game this year and i think there you know we went through with your shooting you you have upside left to uh to fill on on both sides of the floor for sure so um now, the last thing that we do um, on this show, usually when I do it with my co-host, when he's here with me, um, we do a segment uh, called Sell Me This Pen, a little play on the Wolf of uh, Wall Street. And uh, we basically have him go through a 30-second elevator pitch on the prospect that we're covering. So um, I'm going to let, since I got you here, I'm going to let you sell me this pen on Colin Castleton. So if you were selling yourself to an NBA team uh, on a little 30-second elevator pitch, how would you sell them on, on Colin Castleton? Yeah, so I would just say, um, you know, really just a, a, a big man who's going to come help your team right away um, on the defensive end, being able to be versatile. Um, and on the offensive end, somebody who can, can come in and, and play multiple sets, whatever actions you need to run, I can run them. Um, I feel like I'm very versatile on that and being able to dribble handoff, uh, play at a short role, being able to pass the ball, um, finding my cutters, finding teammates who can get open with good screens. Um, and somebody who's going to affect – you know, both sides of the floor, not just an offensive player, but also a defensive player. Um, and I can help out from day one with whatever a team needs. hundred uh, percent. Colin, man, I appreciate you uh, taking the time, watch film, chop it up. I, I think the insights that you gave um, were really fun to listen to from, you know, your perspective. So I uh, appreciate you coming and taking the time, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you having me.